Hello fellow traders, Curtis from Beyond Backtesting here. Hope your trading is going well. I'm probably finished trading for the day. I seen the structural short this morning. I had trouble executing on it, but I was able to uh, find some high confidence trades and do all right. So likely finished it for the day. <clears throat> Don't want me taking a lot of risk in this market at this time. And uh, here you can see the color is a little bit hard, but here you can see my new layout. Uh, obviously experimental, but I've been developing some signals over the weekend. Uh, maybe hard to see this. I have some colors here to show me that shows me, uh, gives me some signals for scalping. I have some signals here. I got more of a vertical view of the volume here. This is a 30 minute. It could be a range. It could be anything really. <clears throat> Just a vertical view of the volume. I have my day structure here. I really like having a daily chart up the, for the whole day. And uh, so, yeah, this is uh, my new stuff. Uh, really, Working as you see this in NT8 Ninja Trader 8, and it's uh, really important for this type of work I'm doing when you're doing hybrid trading. Uh, and uh, you know, I wish it wasn't the case that multi charts for that uh, trade station would uh, get their act together, so to speak. Well, multi charts is pretty good, but trade station, yeah, um, <clears throat> this is not a trading, this is not a topic on uh, trading software. But I'm much more efficient in, in power language and easy language. And so it takes a lot of work to, to convert and back and forth. Um, so I just wish, uh, but maybe if I work in Ninja Trader more, I'll become, you know, as, as fluent in, in, T, in, in uh, Ninja Script as I am in, uh, in power language. Certainly C Sharp, my background, my favorite language to program in. Um, but for now, I'm much more efficient in, in power language and, and, and multi chart. And, and it, but yet it doesn't give me the, the power of Ninja Trader. I guess maybe that's a trade-off, right? So unfortunately, it takes a lot of work to try to develop these hybrid si signals because it requires you developing the multi-charts first, importing them, and or I don't have all the data to really do the same type of testing or the same chart types. It's just a lot of, uh, yes, yeah, a lot of work. And that's what it takes, right? <clears throat> and uh, so, yeah. Uh, hopefully I'll get more efficient and figure out how to do things better. Uh, but uh, multi-chart, I mean, the, the Ninja Trader 8, NT8, that has better charting, it has better, um, and I am a multi-charts license user and an NT8 license user, uh, but the NT8 has better charting, has uh, better, uh, has a replay, just has some advantages for this type of work. <clears throat> so the day I want to talk about, uh, as you can see here, I've been trying to do this topic, uh, the ports of execution. Okay, I have a couple of topics we'll talk about in trading. But one of the things I want to talk about is the importance of execution. And some traders say execution is everything. I don't know that it's everything, but it's certainly important. It's very important. And, you know, when I first started trading, uh, one of the things I was wanted to know was, okay, where is this trader spending their, their activity? Their, what are they doing? You know, where are they spending their, their attention? Because I thought if I could know where they're spending their attention, then I could uh, replicate that, okay, to, to what they were doing, right? And I just and the reality is is that a scalper, an elite scalper, and at that time there wasn't as much information. You really it was really difficult to see what traders were doing. There were rooms and things, but I think the day is much more transparent. And you know, elite scalpers are doing very little. The reality is they're doing very little in the moment uh, because there's no time, right? There's there's very little time to, to, to react. You have to have know what you're going to do before you do it. And so a trader may be reading the tape before a setup happens or. As the, and but already have in mindset what they're going to do because there's just no time. Here you see a signal here. I scalp off these. I'm not trading now, but I scalp off my signals. I want to be scalping off algorithmic signals, right? <clears throat> I want everything in my trading to be a program setup or a condition to where I'm, I read the tape event. So I'm not just trying to take any type of trade. If I see a trade, I can see lots of trades a day, but I'm trying to take the highest quality trades. That means I have to have an algorithmic setup, a signal or a condition where I can trade within. It could be a, it could be a condition, a specific market condition, or it could be a an actual algorithmic signal. And I'm trying to develop more algorithmic signals so that I'm not as constrained by one type of a setup. And that's what you see here. But when we talk about execution, right, a trader is doing very little. The reality is they're doing very little when they execute um, because there's no time, right? But that was one of the things I was always wondering, what are they doing, what are they doing? Well, they're doing a lot before and, you know, and in my case, I have quite a bit of my signals. I'm doing my tape reading, understanding the market structure, understanding what it's doing. But when it gets down to that that last moment, right, you're doing very little because there's no time. And often a trader is looking at a very simple rule, such as a break of a five-minute high um, or, you know, five-minute high break or 
you know, break up a high or a low, something simple like that is what they're actually doing. <clears throat> and this goes into, you know, the 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 importance in how we develop our, our when we can develop a process and a method and develop it really well, it becomes very hard to improve on that, actually. And what I want to talk about here is in a couple of different ways, but, or speak to, um, you know, if you look at this, my charts, which I'm, I'm happy with what I got here, you know, I got different types of information. You may think, oh, that's the secret. It's volumetric charts, right? That's, that's, that's the secret, volumetric charts. That's it. That's not the case, though. You know, that's not the case at all. The reality is there are, you know, let's talk about time and charts for a moment. Uh, minute charts or time-based charts have a lot of problems for day trading, active trading type systems. Uh, one of the problems is that the bars are non-normal. So they have different sizes. There's it's very small, very large. That means it's difficult to develop a stop loss form. And <clears throat> for many day traders, I've recognized this for you know, years, that, hey, that tick charts, range charts, volume charts may all work better, right? And they moved away from many traders, many of these traders have moved away from time-based charts to trying to use a more normal distributed bar. Okay. Nothing new. Many systematic traders today still use time-based charts because you can back test the longest history on them. Okay. So that's why we use them. Although even quantitative traders have recognized that other types of charts, uh, charting data may be more suitable for, you know, getting better results. The, the point is, though, is that there are six-figure traders who only trade five-minute charts, right? And I'm sure there are seven-figure traders, but they, 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 they have mastered their craft. And so who are we to say that uh, a time-based chart is, uh, who are we to say that, um, you know, that, oh, time-based charts don't work? You're going to tell a six-figure trader or a seven-figure trader his time-based charts don't work, you know? He's mastered his chart, and when you master something, you can get extremely good at it, and it's you know, and it can be very difficult actually to actually improve upon that. Once you get to that that such a sufficient level, it's very difficult to 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 get to even improve on it because there's either no time. Now, in my case, I'm fortunate to be able to program signals. I can program very complex information to my signals, but a typical discretionary trader wouldn't be able to process that. And you know, beyond that it can be very hard to improve results. And that's, and the reason I speak to this is there's a, there's a, um, there's often a, a searching, right? To, to say, okay, oh, you know, searching for secrets or things. And a lot of it comes down to having some internal uh, development of your process and your systems and your methods, right? And not always searching for something else. Right, not always searching for something else. Um, you just imagine a, a trader who is on the path to become a six-figure trader who trades on five-minute charts, who would hear that volume charts are better and let that self-doubt creep in. Right, it would not be good because um, you know he's a master of his of his tool. And and when, when you talk about master versus a non-master on a certain tool or a certain charting type, they're just different different levels. Right, like for example, on this time-based chart. I, this miniature, I can extract a lot of information from it that you wouldn't be able to wouldn't be able to extract if you were didn't understand how to do it. Um, I'm not going to share that here, but you, you can just extract so much more, right? You know, having said that, you know, if you're not a master of, of time-based charts, uh, again, I, I don't. I think, especially for future traders, other charts make sense, but it's not a um, you know. When it comes it just goes back to the idea of execution. If you're if you're a a trader who masters execution on a time based chart, a five minute chart could become a six figure trader. Or as a trader who has the very best charting, the very fanciest charting, who doesn't master their craft, their processes, their self discipline, their techniques, their processes, and again, get back to whole brain trading, right? Um, their whole their and is able to utilize every advantage they can with their programming, their their market read, their tape read, is unlikely to be successful to the same let level. Right. So it, it's not something outside. It's, it's more internal. Right. And it's more per preference. This is what we like to use. Um, and some people, there are some things that time by basic charts show better. They're obvious. Um, for example, you can have long bars, which show potential breakouts, you know, more clearly. 
and short bars. And there's a lot of things you can read in time based charts if you if you know how to read them and, and minute charts. And you, I can even extract volume profile information from the just about the chart. I don't need to see the volume profile. Um, it's a technique I learned and developed, and I've seen other people discuss it and share. I'm not going to share it right now, but um, I've seen it shared. But you know, I can extract almost anything from a time based chart. And I guess this gets to you know what we want versus don't want in our trading, right? Um, one of the things you know I've been looking at is what other traders are doing, and, and it's fascinating that I see other traders doing similar stuff to what what I've did in the past, and they're doing it very well, and you know being very successful at it, um, and doing it in their own way. Um, and so, you know. I used to do a lot of analysis and, 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 and study market after hours and come up with, you know, one or two day uh, calls or I would study the market after hours and basically have my game plan for trading the next day before the market even opened, uh, you know, and really not even need to look at it. And I, I never really liked trading that way, but it, it, it could certainly, I could see it could have worked, right? It could certainly work. And so um, we have to ask what we want versus what we don't want in our trading. And today, um, I don't want to do a lot of analysis, a lot of discretionary analysis and stuff, unless it's a market, my market reading in the, in the real time. I want to do a lot of discretionary analysis and stuff. So it's not about whether or not doing a, you know analysis can work or not work. It's about what I want in my trading. I don't want that in my trading. Now, if it if I need it, if it's a benefit, I'll do it. But preferably, I'll automate it and, and make that a systematic use systematic signals for that for that uh, for my daily buys. Right, market prep. I should probably do more of that. Right? Better market prep, and but use you know systematic methods because I don't want to do that discretionary work, and uh, I don't want to be doing highly discretionary stuff like that. That where I don't have a uh, where it's outside of market hours, and and where I don't have an immediate read on the market, where I don't have as much feedback, right? And I guess this goes to what we want versus don't want our trading. And you know, speaking of this topic, I spoke to one quant trader once some many years ago, and I was like, "Why did you quit discretionary trading?" Because he was a discretionary trader, and he said, "Well, he didn't like to, to have to continually self introspect himself." And I think discretionary traders understand what, what he was talking about. Is this need to be constantly evaluating yourself and your performance? He just didn't want that in his trading, so he went fully automated. And I certainly see the value of that, uh, and I certainly agree with that to some extent. However, myself being good at calling markets, you know, I, I, I want in my trading some part that's fully automated and I want some part that's hybrid so that I can, I can uh, use my ability to call markets uh, and in the context of quantitative signals, right? So I can see both value. I can see, you know, it's not, in, in my case, the hybrid trading is, is as much about what I want, what I want in my trading, you know, as what, as what I don't want, right? But in this case, and based on how my performance goes, it kind of depends on the breakdown of these, right? But what I don't want is doing a lot of, uh, you know, after hours analysis and stuff like that, because it's uh, not that it can't work. I just don't want it in my trading, right? Um, so what I would do instead, right, if I want that, would be to develop systems or automated methods that give me a bias so that it can be uh, systematic and and fully automated and, and, and not taking my time, right? Um, and let's see what I was going to talk about. So yeah, um, and, and one thing I want to talk about, you know, I've talked about execution. I've talked about the, the type of trading level that we're talking about achieving. And um, I want to talk about really trying because I've seen a real uh, improvement in my performance since I've recently been really trying. And, and what I mean by really trying is when I was losing recently in the micros was because I would get to the micros and be playing. I said, I'm not going to trade. I'm just going to play. Um, I'm just going to market make, right, which is – you know, almost inevitably leads to the loss. I'm just going to flip some shares, right? Because I didn't really do the homework. I didn't do my analysis or I didn't, um, I haven't done my signals. I haven't prepared. I haven't done my replay. And inevitably, many times that leads to loss. And it also leads to, if you're good at doing something, which I am, such as reading the tape and reading the market, it's, uh, it's not really performing at our best, right? It's not, it's a uh, it's a waste, right? It's a waste if you can call the market and you're not doing it because you are risk averse or because you you're, you didn't do the work. Then you shouldn't get to go and play in the market. <laughs> you shouldn't get to go play because you're wasting your time. For, it really, is, it's more about wasting your time and not and not really uh, developing. 
and also it keeps us from failing. But you know, I've talked a lot about how most of us will not be able to achieve this type of a performance that I've referenced. That's required to do the type of performance that most of us want to do. Um, and I don't even know if I can do it. I've been doing it on several days now, right? But that's that's a short sample, right? I can do it some days, but we have to do it every day. That's the difference. You have to go and execute every day. Um, and so some people, I think, don't want to try because they don't want to fail, right? And that's also uh, uh, not useful because uh, failing is useful at this because if you – it doesn't mean that, okay, you can't trade. It, it may mean that you need to go fully automated or build up a portfolio or trade smaller. But there's a value in, in, in really trying and giving it something, uh, a real attempt. And so, um, you know, that's been on my mind as well as, hey, it's, it's, it's worth really trying at this. Um, you don't want to fail or lose money and say, I lost money because I was just doing stupid stuff. I didn't have a game plan. I didn't have rules. I wasn't supposed to trade all those types of excuses because you're not learning. We are not learning anything from that. It's just not, it's just not useful. Um, what else? Let's see. Yeah. And, and like I said, you know, it just because we can't, if we can't achieve a certain level, doesn't mean you can't trade. It means maybe mean you have to trade at a little different level, right? Either smaller risk and, and doesn't mean you can't trade. You can't realize you're trading. Um, and that's nice about the micros is you can trade smaller, and, uh, you know, when, when, if, you know, you feel like there's too much pressure, like the day I felt there's a lot of pressure coming in the market, I traded small until I could build up and, and, and find some high confidence trades. Um, yeah, I want to talk to another thing, speak to another thing too, which is cynicism, right? And I want to warn against, I've talked about, and, and going back to execution, right, which is what we're talking about. I want to warn you against cynicism because most there are very few winners who are cynics, right? Most losers are cynics, and this is just my observation, right? Most you're not going to be a cynic if you're a loser. And there are, as a certain group, there's two things I've noticed in the trading community, which is really uh, unfortunate. One is there's a group of a uh, group of people who are out to uh, you know harass traders and things, and um. And, to try to expose, okay, he's a sim trader or this or that. And it's, and it's, uh, there's some value in that if you're exposing frauds and things, and that's a, that's a value to the community. However, you know, I've also seen traders who appear to be putting in a good faith effort who don't appear to be overly making fraud, you know, they're not making fraudulent statements or whatever. And then there's this idea, uh, oh, they're a sim trader. Okay. <laughs> well, just assume everybody's a sim trader, right? Assume everybody's a sim trader. Um, it, you know, it, as long as they're not making claims that they're not, then, um, you know, and they're working on their craft, maybe they should be seen, you know, before there's a progression, right? If a trader is going to progress from, uh, from, you know, from say sim trading to lob trading, there's a progression involved in that. And so we can expect a progression, right? And so I just wonder if some of these, uh, this, these cynics and these, this negative sentiment, would not hurt some of those traders developing and to say, somebody needs to say, hey, it's all right to be a sim trader. You should be on the sim until you're ready, right? Now, the micros give you that stepping stone. Trials give you a stepping stone. But uh, certainly, you know, it's okay to turn the sim for six months, a year. I mean, you're just going to, you know, if, if that's how you want to do it. Uh, in, in my opinion, you don't want to be on the sim too long. You want to have a progression. You want to have, if you're doing, if you're performing, you want to be able to, to take that to the live, which is much easier than micros. But there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and, you know, I, I mentioned that because when you lose, you want to, you, you know, losers want support. They want to say, hey, I know why he couldn't do it. And I know why, you know, I couldn't do it. I want to show that he couldn't do it either. Right. And the other thing I see, which is also uh, just, it's always been prevalent, but the idea of I'm not, I'm not the guru, right? But everybody else is, right? Or the, or the, or your, or your fake guru. And this is something I see with a lot of the, the advertising and, uh, and a lot of traders who, who, and it's really distasteful in my opinion. Um, again, it's this idea that, that only your way works, right? And that's not the case. It's not the case. Not only, not only your, your way works. And a lot of traders are doing similar stuff, to be honest. Um, was one thing I found and seen through my work is that a lot of traders are doing similar stuff. Um, 
you know, so that's not the case either. If, if, if your system is really much like that, like they're like nobody else's method works, be very careful of that trader. Be very mindful because that trader is probably, regardless of the, if how they can trade or not, they're probably um, a type of person who may not be someone he won't be learning under, right? And speaking of the, that of the execution, right, and, and, and what we need, right, I talked about the time-based charts and things, but again, it's that mindset. I want to go back to the mindset. For example, for the longest time, I was a type of trader, and this is a question you can ask yourself, how you feel about this? And it may show, it may reveal where you are in your trading, right? I was a type of trader, so I need a, I need a thousand dollar daily loss limit. Okay, I need that. And of course, the micros didn't exist, so that maybe makes sense, but but here's the difference. A it's it's not it's the it's the wrong mindset. The the performance mindset would be, hey, can I, if, if I were to say, hey, could you do that with four hundred dollar, a four hundred dollar loss limit, right? Versus a thousand. The the trader who's not, in my opinion, quite mentally where they should be at is a trader who says, I need the thousand dollar day loss limit, right? That's not the mindset of a trader who's going to have a high perform that the most elite traders. They're, the most elite traders are going to look at this as a challenge. Oh, you think I can do it for four hundred? Maybe I, I, I'm going to prove you do. I can. I'm going to prove to you I can do it for three fifty, right? Uh, let, let's, let me let me show what I can do. Let me see how 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 low I can get that loss limit, right? And reality is, is I've been thinking about it. You probably only need one and one half enough for one and one half trades. Uh, Trade risk for your daily loss limit. So if your risk is three hundred, you would only need three hundred plus one hundred and fifty. If I think about rationally, it, it's not about the loss limit itself. It's about how we approach, uh, how we view obstacles in our trading, and it's about having confidence and and uh, it's about having a, a mindset of of a challenge versus an adversity. Right? If we see that as a risk, as a threat then that's a problem. And reality is obviously if we're performing, we should be increasing that at some point if we're consistent, right? When we get consistent, otherwise there's no point in it, right? But if we see that, the reason I bring this up, if we see that as an adversity, we may want to increase that too soon. And I, and I often wonder if I've, if I've increased it too much given, uh, you know, just given how early I am in this process. Um, but this is again, the mind speaking to the mindset. Of, of a trader who's going to have the, the right mindset, the performance mindset versus a trader who's not. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's good today. We can see many traders today, you know, how they perform. There's there's much more information. There's, there's I think there's the information on, and still the CLE traders is, is it, um, the, the transparency is the greatest it's being, right? So, okay, that's all for now.